the Nottingham Suburban Railway was opened in December 1889 with a length of 3.65 miles, that's 5.8 kilometres, and it served the northeastern suburbs of Nottingham and was built to shorten the distance by train to Ilkeston and towns on the Leem Valley Railway line and also to connect important brickworks near Nottingham. The line was operated by the Great Northern Railway and it branched off at Daybrook Junction right next to Daybrook Station. Now Daybrook Station was originally known as Bestwood and Arnold, opening in February 1876, eventually being renamed to Daybrook in August 1876, so not long after. The station closed to passengers in 1960 and June 1964 to goods and freight. Once leaving the site of Daybrook Station, the railway came across the main road of the form of a bridge that you can see just now. The old bridge going over the road at Daybrook Go Outdoors is just on the right now. And it continued on right where the car park spacings are before it hit Daybrook Junction. And it separated in two ways, heading off in this direction, going straight on towards what is Mapley Tunnel and also on to Colic Yard. If we take a look at rail map online, we can see all these red lines which were operated by the Great Northern Railway. The yellow one's the Midland Railway, and the blue one is the Great Central Railway. Daybrook Junction, where we're beginning our walk today, is just here, top centre. We'll follow the route as best we can before we pick up the track bed again where Woodfort Park is and the buried Ashwell Tunnel. Beyond that, we've got the junction just before Sherwood Station where Mapley Brickworks was. There's still some remains of the incline track work or track bed going up towards that. Beyond Sherwood Station, there was Sherwood Tunnel and then on towards St Anne's Station, Forneywood Tunnel, Forneywood Station where there was another little branch going off to another brickworks and also a little fifth tunnel still remains hidden away and then on to Snenton Tunnel before reaching Trent Lane Junction where the line joined on to the former Great Northern Line between Nottingham and Colic. A little zoom in to the location where we are right now, so Daybrook Station was just over here, Daybrook Junction right there. Our Nottingham Suburban Line is the one going down to the bottom and the line off to the right is just about to head into Mapley Tunnel. And from down below, you can see where the track bed is no more. And then this line of trees on the right of me, that is where Daybrook Junction veered off. And you've got the embankment straight ahead. They're headed off towards the line, off towards Mapley Tunnel and also Collet Yard. If we run up this embankment, I can show you the direction that that goes. The Daybrook Junction and our line off towards one fourth from the Nottingham Suburban line well, that was down here and we can actually get to see a little bit of it. Well, Daybrook Junction and the point work would have been just over there. Track bed's still there, look. Going around and looping around. It is double fenced for some reason. If you can make out, there it is, look, the other line of fence. But it curved around that way, going over Thackeray's Lane. It's a nice brick arch bridge going over. I think I have a photograph of that before proceeding on and pushing up to Ashwell Tunnel and Woodford Park. And then we'd find the remains of what would have been Sherwood Station. This is Daybrook Junction. You can see it's a single track spur off to the right hand side. The line in the distance going off towards Mapley Tunnel, Gedling Colliery and Collet Yard. And the station of Daybrook is a little way behind us. Another view of Daybrook Station, you can see right in front of the locomotive, there is the bridge going over the main road of Daybrook. And if you really, really look to the right hand side where the telegraph pole is, the set of points is just there, the other side of the bridge, taking the Nottingham Suburban line away. So a little bit closer, look, so down there, there's a house, big garden. And again, you can see the curvature of that track bed, look. It's not even been fully grown on, look, there's plenty of soil there, no trace of ballast. But the curve around that took us over Thackeray's Lane. Track bed going back towards Daybrook Station, where the Nottingham Suburban Railway pretty much began its journey. I'm going to have to follow a couple of roads now, bypass where Thackeray's Lane is, and meet you around about at Woodfort Park. 
So as the track bed went away from Daybrook Junction, you can see the tree line of where it once was, but then it disappeared into a lot of houses. So the drone is now following pretty much the route of where the curvature of the track where it went. And next up, it would hit Thackeray's Lane. I'm going to show you a picture of the bridge there in a moment before heading up to where Woodfort Park is. And onto Woodfort Avenue. Our Nottingham Suburban line pretty much was on the other side of these houses on the left. If I take these steps, it should take us to Woodfort Drive, where the track bed used to then burst out from below the bridge. I think we're going to get to see the bridge as we get to the top, look. Yep, there it is, look. Now on that side, someone's lucky enough to have that bridge in their garden. On this side, it goes into Woodfort Park. Look at that. Let's get down there. Woodfort Drive is one of the most mistaken things of this entire railway. A lot of people seem to think that this was the Ashwell Tunnel, the one that went through Woodfort Park, but that is buried just down there. This is actually just the bridge that goes under Woodfort Drive, but the sculpture was put in place for the purposes to actually, you know, as a reminder of the railway that went through here. Edward Parry was the chief designer and engineer on this railway, and Woodfort Grange Park, he actually owned the stately home on this residence. I remember seeing this as a child and even I believed back then it was a tunnel. Now you can see the original bridge is all around, look. That's fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's crazy actually how it's got the uh, yellow and black clearance paintwork above it. I'm not sure what that would have been for. And that goes into the garden on the other side that I showed you when we was up on the road. It's a beautiful little sculpture, isn't it? It's got the rails down. Most people in Nottinghamshire would have seen this and visited it at some point. It's got a great central railway plate on the front, look. Even though this was the Great Northern Railway, but we'll let them off with that, won't we? I wonder what the little hole's for at the bottom down there. I've got to think that that bridge is still hollowed out below there, isn't it? You'd expect it to be, wouldn't you? So, Ashwell Tunnel, 70 yards long. I've got a couple of old pictures to show you, but that was pretty much just through there, completely buried now and landscaped. And once it was out the other side of it, 70 yards, we'd then head on to where Sherwood Station was. There was also a tunnel at Sherwood and also a junction which led off to a brickworks. Right now I've come on a bit of an incline. I've come up from the little red engine underneath Woodfork Drive. This is where it's landscaped and buried Ashwell Tunnel, 70 yard Ashwell Tunnel. It's completely landscaped at both ends, but it's crazy to think the portals are still down there. I don't think the tunnel is completely infilled through to the middle either. So it is still there, but that's without a bit of an excavation, that one's gone forever.
tunnel would have burst out down there. So we've got to take this path around and head down towards where Sherwood Station was. I can get you to where it would have come out. So that's just down there. That's where the portal is through there, completely buried. Don't think there's any remains whatsoever. If I can get down there, we'll go and take a little look. I do just think what passers-by must think, you know, when I'm like popping in and out of all these little like nooks and crannies and crevices, little hedgeways and pathways, and I just suddenly pop out and like, oh yeah, hi, morning. It's quite a view coming out of there, isn't it? From the hill overlooking Sherwood. So I got you down on that's where Ashwell Tunnel burst out. Great big light cliff face, isn't it? By the looks of it, it's really, really high up. Over on the left, there was a bit of a siding. I turn you around, you can see the big tower block. Track bed went straight through there. There was a junction here, which went off to a brickworks up there. And Sherwood Station was just beyond the second tower. So a quick trip back to Railmap Online. You can see where we've come from top out of sight is Daybrook Junction and we've come through Woodfort Park, bypassed Ashwell Tunnel and we're at the site of Sherwood Station. You see on the right hand side there's a little branch line going off in red that went off to Mapley Brickworks. We're going to go and have a little look at something regarding that in a moment. Once we've done Sherwood Station site we'll see a little bridge before bypassing the site of the buried Sherwood Tunnel. Sherwood Station had a very, very short life. It opened in 1889, but it only lasted until 1916 for passengers. So that's when, you know, World War I was um, in its early stages, wasn't it? It's such a long time ago. 1951, though, the line closed as well. So I'm assuming that it closed to freight at the same year as the line closed or 1916 as well as the passengers. Note in this colourised shot you have got the station buildings in the foreground with the signal box in the very background is the curve coming out of Ashwell Tunnel. Notice the rake of trucks on the right hand side going around that curve. You see it a little bit closer in this one with the wagons missing look and that fine locomotive and passenger working coming towards us. That is the branch off towards Mapperley Brickworks and we're going to follow the tree line up towards where there's a little relic and reminder of this little branch going up to the brickworks. What we're looking for is this, this little bridge. You see the track work going down to the bottom and the curve going off to the right? That is the curve we've just been looking at coming away from the Nottingham Suburban Railway. We're going to go and look for this bridge. I'm sure it's still standing on the Sherwood Vale Road and here's another image of it after it has been abandoned. But note the track is still down. I think this was taken in the late 1950s. There it is right behind me. I have found it. So this is the former incline. It went up towards Mapley Brickworks, opening in the 1860s, I believe, the brickworks. And also they got this connection in when the railway, not the suburban line, opened. The line coming up from there going up here. Now one interesting fact about the brickworks is that those bricks helped to build the London St Pancras station. So as you can see on the inside it has clearly been breeze blocked up so I'm assuming it's been landscaped on the other side of that. Got the nice red brick roof to it. Notice it skews off to the left a little bit there. It curves a little bit doesn't it and red brick but heavily heavily graffitied walls inside. Looks like that's been there for some time, doesn't it? All abutments still looking good. Zoom out a little bit, you can see it a bit better. And over the top, look up. We will, we'll go and look up there in a moment because there's a little path there, look through the nettles. I'm gonna go and check out. So here we are stood above the portal. Track work would have gone down there and joined onto the Nottingham Suburban line. It's fenced off on this side, but you can see the other wall and abutment and here is where that little bridge is underneath that road and you can just make out the second abutment and wall where that property is in the middle and this is what it used to look like beyond going up the hill very very steep gradient isn't it up towards Mapley Brickworks
come out of Ashwell Tunnel, past the two tower blocks, the track bed pretty much built on where the towers are built. Now, Sherwood Station was next. 1889 that opened and it lasted until 1916 for passenger services until the line's eventual closure in 1951. There's a bridge down there going under Sherwood Vale Road. I can't get to it because it's in the gardens or the back area of that building there. So I'm going to try and get us on top of it at least. I don't think there's any access to it on the other side either. I'll try and find a photo off the internet if I cannot get anywhere near it. Stood smack bang in the track bed. You can see there's a bridge straight ahead of us. Now that is private occupied land in front of us. There's some housing on the right hand side, I believe it is. The station was immediately behind us and the platforms. If you can zoom in just a little bit more, you can make out that archway clearly below Sherwood Vale Road. Jump to a picture though, look, look at this. This is the bridge zoom right in. You can see the platforms did in fact carry on slightly below the bridge. And that is Sherwood Tunnel, just beyond. We'll talk about that in a little while. Here's another photograph taken looking in the same direction. Can't really make out Sherwood Tunnel in there, but it should be in the mist somewhere. And this other photograph looking back in the opposite direction. Sherwood Tunnel would be right behind us, but you can just make out those blocks of flats right through the archway. So up on Sherwood Vale Road, and there's the bridge I was telling you about. Look, you've got the blue wall and the abutment. It's quite a wide bridge, isn't it? Take you around there. You can just see where the track bed was. Let's continue on. There it is on the other side. Look, it'd be amazing if we could get down there. I very much doubt we will. But yeah, you can see why I couldn't get up to it. I mean, maybe I could have done, but it is private, isn't it? If I do that, you can just see where it's gated across. You see abutments on that side, look. And the blue wall poking out over. Take you over the other side of the road. Track bed's down there, look. But no one's walked on that for a long time, have they, I don't think. And as we push on and leave Sherwood Vale behind, this is the route as it heads up towards Sherwood Tunnel. Sherwood Tunnel would be directly below where we are now. The portal is buried down there. I'd love to know if anything still exists, but we can't get to it. So what happens next after this very, very short cutting that we can't get down, but it's there. Sherwood Tunnel, 442 yards in length, completely landscaped and buried again, sadly. Tunnel is most likely still gonna be there all the way through apart from the landscape portals. The station house for St. Anne's Station is apparently on the other end at the Western Portal. So we've got to navigate our way around a few roads and I'm going to see if we can find the St. Anne's Station site. Sherwood Tunnel was immediately after the accommodation bridge, which was Sherwood Vale, 442 yards in length. And this portal has been covered with earth, so it is still going to be beyond the earth, but completely buried. And the same can be said of the other portal too, completely covered with earth and buried. Right over there is where the portal to Sherwood Tunnel was, 442 yards, going directly under these new builds. So I should plod along, I'm going up Mapley Rise, left Sherwood Tunnel portal behind, and I'll hopefully pick up the route to round about where Rise Park Station was, and hopefully where the station house building is too. So once at the top of Mapley Rise, it's the Wells Road. There's a school and a dog training kennels place on the right hand side. And our portal for the tunnel would have come out by now. I mean, with this line being completely obliterated from the face of the earth, it's really difficult to find all those nuggets of historical remnants of the Nottingham Suburban Railway. It really is going to be one of those where hopefully Historical photographs from the time when it was operational will be able to tell the story as well as me following the route as best that I can. So popping down Doolan Drive, I'm hoping to pick up where the track bed was. The track bed actually split into two here, where Doolan Drive was and those quick glimpses of those properties. The privacy I'm not going to show them, there was actually a good shed and a few sidings. St Answell Station consisted of two platforms. It opened in 1889, but closed in 1916 to passengers. So back down here to the Wells Road and there used to be a viaduct from the track bed 
shooting across as it headed towards Forneywood Tunnel. Here is a lovely image of the viaduct over the Wells Road. Two brick arches on the left hand side and one brick arch for pedestrian usage on the right. And that iron trellis going above the top. Now look at this, we've got a kind of an aerial view looking down and you can just spot where the viaduct is look, on the left hand side. Can you see that? Just above those buildings and the Wells Road curves off away from that. The top right hand corner you can just see the track bed going into a cutting to the left before it would go into Sherwood Tunnel. Now when this bridge was demolished in 1954, the embankment was also removed in 1959 and the rubble from this embankment was packed into Forneywood Tunnel. The Forneywood Tunnel was the second longest on the route at 408 yards. Again, completely buried. I believe what the portals are kind of still visible just at the top, but it's on private land, so we're not going to get to see that. But Forneywood Station was just on the other side. This is also allegedly the site behind me of the ancient St Anne's Well which is roughly around about where the Beckburn River flows to the River Trent, around about two miles away. Look how steep this is, Bartholomew's Road. You can see why they needed a tunnel to get through towards Forneywood. So I'm now coming down the opposite side, Forneywood Rise. There's 408 yards of Forneywood Tunnel, Burst House at the left, and Forneywood Station would have been on the right at the very bottom of this road. So Forneywood Tunnel is 408 yards in length and it is completely infilled from what I believe using that rubble from the embankment that previously mentioned with both portals covered in earth. And this is where we are right now. So St Anne's Station is just up here. We've been there not that long ago and we've crossed over the viaduct over the Wells Road. Then we've got 408 yard in length Forneywood Tunnel Forneywood station and then we're going to see where the junction of the fifth tunnel was that led up to the brickworks and straight after that was Snenton tunnel. Forneywood tunnel coming out up there, Forneywood station just down there, two platforms opening in 1889, passenger service again till 1916 until the line's eventual closure. Forneywood railway station this consisted of two platforms and a few sidings and a little junction off to a brickworks, opening in 1889 and closed to passengers in 1916, with the line closing in 1951. Now I do believe there was a couple of specials or rail tours that used this station after its official closure, and it had plenty of sidings still used for the brickworks. Note the trolley bus going over the bridge, and you can see Snenton Tunnel in the background. But this is in happier days looking in the opposite direction. We're about to go and see that bridge. That's still in operation with the traffic above it. And there's the station in the background. So away from Forneywood Station, there was also a fifth tunnel on this route, but not directly on this line. It was a little tunnel and a branch going off towards a brickworks just on the edge of Forneywood Station. A little siding and it was around about, well, it wasn't very long at all, went through a tunnel and come out the other side to the brickworks. And it was locally known as the Fifth Tunnel. And here are a few images of the Fifth Tunnel that went up to the brickworks, the Nottingham Patent Brickworks. 118 yards in length and it ran from Forneywood Station and under Forneywood Lane. There was a steep gradient uphill from the station so therefore the wagons were hauled through this tunnel and up to the brickworks by a stationary engine. And a close up look on maps, so we've got Forneywood Station just here, Snenton Tunnel we're about to get to just down here, and the Nottingham Brickworks was just up here with the fifth tunnel coming away from the main line. So over there we've got Carlton Road and you can see the walling of the underbridge. Now it's on the right hand side, it's still present. On the left hand side, it appears to be gone. And that was once Forneywood Station down there, opened in 1889. Carlton Road, X Overbridge look. It's got Haven Brick Company, Tamworth, Staffordshire. So they've come a fair distance, maybe about 50, 55 miles from where they were manufactured. And it's on every few. There's another one there, look. And that one's faded and so forth. On the other side of Carlton Road now, that's the other side of the wall. So you've just seen me walking along the pavement on the other side of that wall. And you can see where we are in this filled in section of the track bed. We're at road level. 
roadside level on the other side and look at the ground below so you can see that this would have been quite a cutting on this side and further down that way i think i can see the portal to our Snenton tunnel so i was fortunate enough a year or so ago to get inside Snenton tunnel 118 yards in length right to the other end where it has been landscaped and filled in so now we're beyond 40 wood station and the fifth tunnel that was 108 yards by the way just in case i didn't mention it before Let's have a look at the portal and then I'll show you what it's like inside. This photograph is showing where the tunnel is behind us. You can see it is still not been filled in and the bridge is still open and apparent and clear. We can turn around though, look and the infill has begun. You can see the tunnel mouth is only half visible. But here's a shot of it in happier days, the full tunnel with polished steel track work going through it reminding us of what it once was like. This is the 118 yard long Snenton tunnel the only one of the five along this entire route that you can pretty much still see and get into as well. Do you want to have a look inside? It's been turned into a shooting range around about 30 years ago. We've got some footage and some photos. through the tunnel of these railway sleepers that have been repurposed all the way down you can see the strip lighting all the way down that's where the sleepers and also another infilled brittle refuge on the right hand This is it, this is as far as we could go. That's the tunnel roof that I'm touching just above, and there's a curve just there, which is the tunnel mouth just there. And on the other side is the infill where the tunnel was filled in. That's remarkable, isn't it? point actually walk on top of the tunnel although it's extremely overgrown and I'm going to end up on the footpath anyway but that is bang on top and just down there that's where the tunnel portal is so after Snenton tunnel the track bed is absolutely gone and done and dusted with again and we have to pick up the route at the former Great Northern line between Collier Yard and Nottingham right where the active railway line is between Nottingham Grantham, Newark and Lincoln. The red line coming down from the top loops around, crosses over the yellow line which is open today and would have joined on at one time onto the other red line going from right to left. I'm going to take a look at some footage that I filmed a year or so ago when all the trees and weeds were missing and you could see some amazing structures left over from where all the bridges and viaducts were from where these lines all intersected. 
So there's your old Nottingham Suburban line. And what it would have done here is cross over the Great Northern line. So through the trees, look, there's a little bit more. There's another brick wall. So that's where we've just been stood. Just there, you can see the abutment through there. And here's another one, look. Let's get you back a little bit. Clearly showing the route coming straight over straight over on that one so it's a skew to the line that we've been walking it's quite high up is it down here yeah there's the other side of it so that was clearly what looks like a central pillar and there must have been another one or an embankment on the other side i'm gonna have a bit of a scramble through here and see if i can get up there and take a little look i think that's gonna be yeah there's that abutment there look at a bit of coping stone on top i'm going to have a go at getting up here without falling over oh i'm nearly there oh, i ain't done this for a while and i'm up i'm up i mean nothing to see let's see if we can get on top of that abutment wall here we go, look. Nice layout of coping stones all the way around. So the route coming straight across in a diagonal fashion over our Great Northern Line. And if we go back through here, we should be able to pick up where that little spur was as well. Let's get down here. Uh, what's next? Wow, it's a proper little jungle mission, this. Well done if you're still with me, by the way, because it's quite spiky and prickly. And I've gone about as far as I can now. So the old spur has now joined on and it headed off towards Sherwood and on towards Daybrook. Okay, so thankfully I did have that older footage which we could just show you around all this area and um, where I poked around because it's just impossible up there with all that greenery and nature which is lovely in itself. So the Nottingham Suburban Line shot across, looped around and hit up at Trent Lane Junction. It's so just here it gets quite interesting. There's all manner of bridges all the way around and we get to cross the active line. That's just down there, look. There we go. And that bridge there, that once carried our Nottingham Suburban Railway before lowering it down to join on to the lines around about a quarter of a mile or so just over there.
the track bed one last time as I proceed into Nottingham. I have covered this section of lines, the city centre, in a previous video going on past the warehouse and also onto London Low Level, London Road Low Level Station. So I'll put a link to that at the end alongside the other video that I did of the culvert. The train going past, you might see it. That's just proceeding into Nottingham. It's got about a quarter of a mile to go before it's in Nottingham Midland Station. Please comment below. Thank you very much for watching this video on the Nottingham Suburban Railway. Like, subscribe, comment below. More suggestions down below, please. Anywhere in the Midlands and either further afield. All the social medias are popping up below. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and also X, formerly known as Twitter. I'll see you in the very next one. Bye bye for now. As always, you can follow me on social media. All the links are popping up below for all four of them. Love you to follow me on them. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.